All right, so I just received the uh, Arbiter Extruder V2, which is the latest revision uh, of the design by uh, Robert Lawrence. This time uh, manufactured entirely by uh, LDO Motors, which is pretty relevant, uh, as we'll uh, get over a bit later. And so yeah, I just wanted to make a quick little video, hopefully, uh, yeah, just going over what you're getting. Uh, the difference with the previous version, the 1.5 and uh, yeah, hopefully help you decide whether you'd like to upgrade or uh, yeah, just consider it altogether. So first, a uh, little background. So I've, I print a lot of uh, flexible and I could never quite find a decent extra to do that effectively. Uh, most of the issues that I had with many extruders were, uh, yeah, that you will just jam uh, as soon as there is as the, the, the smallest amount of uh, gap between the extruder wheel and the path, the f filament will just get around it as it gets pushed and uh, yeah, just jam in the, within the gear. And so far I've been using, uh, yeah, my Snapbreaker Stepmaker 3-in-1, that's the OG one. Uh, pretty effectively, which is, uh, it has this uh, Mark 8 extruder style and uh, with a little mud to uh, tighten the gap. And uh, yeah, so I've been looking for alternative for my larger uh, rail core uh, printer. And so, uh, yeah, initially I got into the I got myself a kit of uh, the 1.5 uh, Arbiter Extruder, thinking that you would, you know, I would get decent uh, performance out of it because it's lightweight uh, as well, lightweight, compact, uh, short filament path extruder. But uh, yeah, when I received it, the filament path wasn't actually all that uh, tight uh, due to the limitation of manufacturing with this uh, injected enclosure and so I made my own here in uh, SLS uh, just tightening this gap a bit further and I didn't really have the time to test it before the V2 was announced and so um, yeah when I received the 1.5 I was pretty uh, unimpressed pretty under underwhelmed with uh, the tooling quality of uh, this one. I could clearly tell that uh, this uh, 1.5 wasn't quite uh, designed for manufacturing. It wasn't clearly optimized for injection molding. And so I reached out to uh, Robert, offering my uh, uh, expertise in uh, manufacturing design, especially for injection. Uh, because yeah, I, I really like this concept. I really wanted it to, to succeed to make a better version. And this is when I learned actually that uh, the V1.5 was actually made without really consulting Robert. So he published the V1 extruder files that were supposed to be made in uh, uh, 3D printing. So the housing was designed to be 3D printable. After some point, uh, so sometime we started seeing uh, nicer printed versions coming up on uh, AliExpress, uh, mostly made in SLS printing. So a bit more robust, more stable material. And eventually this uh, injected model came in. And uh, yeah, uh, I was quite interested because yeah, uh, injection provides the most uh, dimensional stability. Uh, this is a uh, glass fiber nylon material as well, which should hold up to higher temperatures. But yeah, when I received it, I was pretty surprised to see a lot of defects. Like you can actually see here, there is a hole in this wall that's due to too thin material. I think there is one down here in this hole as well. You can barely see it in this lower hole right here at the bottom where the material is too thin and couldn't quite fit up. 
uh, the parting lines are pretty obvious. And uh, yeah, and the filament gap made it uh, for a lot of people not really suitable for um, flexible printing. And so, uh, yeah, I reached out to Robert. Uh, we had a little call. I helped him out, uh, you know, advised him on how to design specifically for um, injection. And uh, it's with uh, this little collaboration that uh, I received this unit. And uh, yeah, uh, now that the background is done, let me show you a bit more about the differences and uh, how it improved on the previous design. So uh, right off the bat, the packaging is already much more complete. Yeah, you get this really nice manual in two pages it has all the configuration uh, for different uh, hardware uh, so firmware types uh, flavor g-code flavors so you have rep rub clipper and marlin so uh, yeah that's a small thing but it's really nice having the the information right in uh, with the package so you don't have to look it up necessarily so you get the unit and you get also this pretty neat little adapter here that uh, I'm definitely going to use this since I'm using a, a Duet 3 mainboard I believe that uh, this is the JSTVH uh, connector that goes with it and so uh, yeah I have this unassembled unit here so I'm just going to put both side by side and let you appreciate the difference in tooling quality. Let me, yes. So you can see that the parting lines are really, really nicely made along this edge. Tolerances are super tight. It now comes with this uh, low profile uh, Bowden adapter as opposed to the uh, high profile long one that was uh, screwed before. They also redid the gear housing, which is this part here that's sandwiched between the stepper and uh, my housing here. And for, for the background, actually, this uh, uh, some further background is that this injected here was done without consulting uh, Robert and was loosely designed out of uh, like based on the 3D printing model. So they did really uh, minimal changes uh, yeah, from this uh, FDM model to the injected. So fortunately, uh, glass fiber nylon is pretty uh, for forgivable when it comes to uh, thickness variation. So it's still it managed to get it's still pretty pretty stable. Uh, this one, sorry. But uh, yeah, it still wasn't as good as it could be. And uh, another uh, area where you can actually notice it is you know, some simple things like this. Uh, um, this adjustment a screw in the v1.5 ha had this little shim here that is uh, very close to the end and uh, yeah it's pretty easy to to lose it whereas now with the ldo one it's a different uh, screw and now it has a much tighter 
knot that actually makes the spring and the shim uh, practically captive. So that overall makes it much more practical to, to use. Uh, the gears also are now um, have been custom uh, made. They are shorter to gain some uh, some space. They are also uh, reversed to have the the filament path closer to the motor and make it of all a, a tighter uh, package. And these are actually uh, cut out of uh, stainless. That's really neat little uh, detail. And uh, the way this new one uh, does the filament path, it has this uh, stainless screw right here that is adjusted here. It's factory adjusted, so you don't need to uh, change anything. But yeah, it goes really close to the wheel i'm sure that this is going to work really well with flexibles here is how i attempted to solve that with the previous one just adding material closer to the wheel And uh, yeah, so that's about it for, for the differences. So we have uh, a much, basically a much more compact and lightweight housing with a much, much better uh, quality. Build quality as well, you can see the difference. So you have this, you, we, we get the closer uh, filament path that should be much better for uh, printable material. We get the captive adjustment screw. And uh, oh, last last thing as well. It's probably a detail to most people, but uh, it matters a lot to me. This kind of uh, s s small thing. So the the shaft on uh, the previous one was actually it's cnc aluminum it's uh, pretty much the same as this guy so it has the shaft and uh, it holds the planetary gears and uh, he, this one was just raw raw cnc aluminum but i noticed that on uh, the ldo they actually went the extra way and had it anodized on top of it so uh, that's a really nice touch as uh, yeah for being since the gear uh, is stainless that means that uh, it will limit the oxidation the galvanic corrosion between uh, those two so they should last very long as well and be very stable in the long term the greasing as well is really tore off uh, right off the box. I remember that when I received uh, the 1.5, the greasing was not quite well uh, uh, dispensed over all the gears. So uh, that's uh, another issue. So basically, the yeah, this unit is ready to install as it is. There is no tinkering to, to do and uh, yeah, it's ready to, to install. So yeah, I think that uh, if you have uh, 1.5 and uh, you've been experiencing issues with uh, flexible or softer materials, this could definitely be a, a good option. Um, I still have to test it. I think that, uh, yeah, this will definitely take a two-part video so what I'm gonna do now is install it uh, set it up on my rail core and uh, test it out and I guess uh, I'll see you again in uh, in another video for like a final conclusion including uh, the printing 
So yeah, I hope that you find it useful and uh, see you in the next one. Cheers.